Bumangon sa tapang at lasa ng bagong pag-asa. A bold blend of Baraco Coffee, fortified in Malungay and other extracts, rich in potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Tikman ang bagong kape ng bayan, Pacquiao Coffee! Pacquiao Original Blend 3-in-1 Coffee. Lasa ng bagong pag-asa. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a Saturday edition of ODN Crunch Time Sports Volleyball Talk. For today, we have three distinguished personalities from the UP women's volleyball team. But before we call them in, allow me to call my resident uh, co-host and Sports Bites PH writer, Mr. Andy Fiel. Good afternoon, Brian. How, how is everything with you? Ang init. <laughs> <laughs> yun naman, Likewise. Likewise. Yun naman sabi ko lang init. Pero saan na pa tayo init ngayon, Andy? Kasi we have very special guests who will be joining us. Yes, uh, actually, I'm in support right now because I happen to have a, ano, <laughs> a cap for the, ano, for the occasion. So I'm ready to go anytime. Kaya nga, pati ako napamaroon eh, kasi wala akong maroon dito. Eh. <laughs> anyway, let's call on our special guest, no? Siyempre, let's start off with their head coach, no other than Coach Godfrey Okumu. Hi, Coach. Hey, Coach. Counting lag. Yeah, there's a, a bit of ano, a, fit, yeah. a bit of a delay. There you go. Hey, Coach. Coach, there's no question yet, Coach. You can still, you can still talk. <laughs> anyway, we'll get back to Coach when he's ready. So, of course, um, ano, Andy, hindi mabubuo yung... Our show will not be complete without two lovely ladies. Yes, so first off, let's call on Miss Andriana Lagman. Hello, po. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, Andriana. Ready ka na ba? Uh, na-brief ka na ba ni Coach Andy do sa mga hard questions? <laughs> yes po. Uh, na-brief na. Ako, yan na madali na yan. Pero syempre, kung meron tayo, may, nandiyan si Andriana, andiyan din yung balita ako, magaling kumanta. Let's welcome <laughs> Miss May Sotomil. Hi po. Hi everyone and hello sa atin mga viewers. Yon. So glad to have you guys on board. So thank you for having us, Bo. A pleasure, yes, always a pleasure. Yeah. Hey, coach, Hello. you ready? Can Hi, you coach. hear me? Yep. So, are you okay, coach? Hello. Good afternoon. All right. There you go. So before we get to the nitty gritty, I would like to give the, to ask um coach uh, coach Gary. Uh, May and Andriana, how are you? How are things going on at your end right now? I, I I'm sure na all of you are also. Hello, um, I can't uh, hear you. Coach, coach, you might be lagging. Ah, uh, yeah, he is lagging. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's stay with. Let's start with uh, Andriana and May. How are things? How are things been with you the past month? Well, almost a year, over a year. How are you surviving in this pan- time of the pandemic? Let's start with Andriana. Um, um, of course it's been hard, champion dealing with the pandemic and everything. But I feel like surrounding yourself with people who love and support you and care for you is um, helps me cope with uh, everything that's going on. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, pa siya, Andy, Andy. How about you, May? Um, for me, sir, it's really um stressful. And Sorry. especially I have to like adjust to a new um routine every day, which is super far from our routine before. Like we're physically active. And yun nga, um like sabi ni Anding, it's also a good thing na kasama namin yung families namin. Kasi ang tagal din namin na hindi sila nakasama because of us being a student athlete. So, oh, yun po. Yeah. How about you, Coach? How are things going on in your end for the past year? Coach? 
I think it's logging again. <laughs> Easy questions pa lang. Coach, it's a nice picture of Coach, huh? Coach, it's not yet time to freeze on the questions. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to take this chance to say uh, thank you, Sir Brian, uh, Coach Andy. And also, I'll t- t- try to take the opportunity to thank my uh, seniors, uh, Todd Scalos, uh, Issa Molde, Justin Dorog, Maristela Layu, Rem Kailing, and uh, Jess Maramos for their good deed. They worked so hard for UP, and uh, that's where we are, where we are. They put us somewhere on the board, and uh, we really appreciate them and give them uh, the maximum respect. When it comes to volleyball, they know the game. Yeah, so they did a good job for us. Now, to answer your question, on my end, um, the future changed, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> we thought it was going to be one year, and now we are going into a uh, second year. Uh, it's been a struggle uh, studying online, doing coaching online, mm-hmm. and uh, some things are not practicable, but uh, we just have to try it. But anyway, uh, all in all, uh, I'm happy to say that we are helping and um, holding on there. We are hanging on nicely. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Coach. So, uh, uh, Coach, are you and the girls ready for these uh, controversial questions by Andy? <laughs> no. Just <laughs> <laughs> come. <laughs> Disconnect. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I have I have nothing to do with the questions. I will just pinch it. All right. So Andy. I think we we, we are ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andy. Fire away. Nothing controversial on my end. Pero, syempre, these are questions that are, ano, your are we, supporters are we allowed would to like to hear. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, coach. <laughs> yes, you can do time out. <laughs> but uh, as I was saying, these are actually ano, questions that are asked by your own supporters because a lot of them would like to get to know all of you. So, I'll start with my um, my year, uh, Baco, a native of Bacolod, correct? No, no, coach. I'm, I'm a native of Iloilo. Iloilo, I just went sorry, yeah. To Bacolod for senior high school. Okay, so tell tell us something about your experience from going to Iloilo, then uh, playing for Bacolod Taitung High School, then, ano, uh, your journey in your ano elementary and high school in volleyball. Tell us something about that. Um, so actually po, uh, I started playing volleyball. It's because of an accident. Literal po mm-hmm. na accident. So yun, nasagasaan ako ng motor. And with that po, my doctor advised me to engage in any physical activity or sports. So yung parents ko are both volleyball players. So syempre, they um, pushed me to play volleyball. And that's when I started to play volleyball then. And ayun, um... I love my I love the process because I've met a lot of people and I didn't expect it din po na um I'll come this far po. So yun I started um playing volleyball when I was in grade 5. Um, my first tournament is yung liga po dito sa amin. Parang summer league that was my first tournament po and then I joined um the varsity team of my elementary school and then I got recruited po by a private school here in Iloilo but then po um, when I was in high school I wasn't like really exposed to um mga ano mga higher leagues kasi po parati kaming alam mo yun talunan <laughs> mga ganun. so then I thought like volleyball is not for me so parang I thought hanggang high school varsity team lang din po talaga ako. Kasi yun nga, hindi kami umaabot ng higher leagues. And then after, um, I got recruited by Bacolod Taitung High School. And that's where, that's when my peak in volleyball talaga po started. So, ayun, um, two years in Bacolod Taitung was I think one of 
the best years of my life kasi um I met I've met my family, my second family, which are my teammates and of course Sir Boy. And yun po, doon ako na exposed to bigger leagues such as the Palarong Pambansa and yun um until na nakapunta po ako sa UP. That's it po. Can you mention to us the person that uh, uh, gave you an opportunity in Bacolod Taitung High School? Ah, okay. Um, si Sir Boy po. Sir Boy is our um, team manager. And he's like the sports coordinator of our school. So, si Sir Boy, um, ano siya? Super bait. Pero alam mo yun, parang first impressions ng tao sa kanya is napakayabang. Kasi nga, yun, kasi pag nagsalita siya, ganun siya eh. Pero so, once makilala mo si Sir Boy, super bait niya. And I'm really thankful kasi um, nandun siya sa journey ko towards um, uh, reaching my peak in volleyball, in high school volleyball, hanggang sa napunta ako sa UP. Okay. Um, shout out to Sir Boy. And uh, going to uh, Anding. Anding, you have an interesting history because we share similarities or connections to your playing. Your mom was a uh, was a good friend of mine in when we were in UP. Um, but your mom also started in your the same high school that you came from, Colegio de San Agustin. Can you can you give us your history on how you started with volleyball in elementary and high school, and how your mom, um, how can you connect your mom to this experience? Because uh, obviously, having a mom as a volleyball player, uh, just like my case, could influence your your way into the sport. So. Say, ano, can you tell us how uh, that ano, happened? Yeah, Actually, Coach, it's quite ironic because I didn't know that she was a volleyball player when I started playing volleyball. So it started in grade four. Volleyball was just a sport that we took in our PE class. And I enjoyed it. And then I heard that there was a volleyball varsity tryout. So I tried out. And that's the only time that I realized that she was a volleyball varsity before because my coach also knew her. And then from there... I just uh, continued playing volleyball. And of course, with her as my mom, she guided me. She instilled in me values such as discipline, commitment in the sport. And I was able to um, use those values and brought it on into high school until I went to college volleyball in UP, the same school that she went to also. And yeah, that's, that's I believe that it's the values that she um, taught me that made me come this far. So, uh, sh- she was not the, your primary ano, um, person that pushed you into the sports. It was actually something was, personal that you wanted to yeah. do. Yes. Um, she's she's not the type to um, tell, like, tell me na, oh, you should try this, try that. Um, it was something that I wanted to do, and then I just realized that it was something that she's done also which was great, yeah. All right, so thank you, Anding. Uh, Coach Gaudi, um, this is actually ano, a very simple question for you because a lot of people would like to know how you started uh, into coaching, the, the origins of your coaching ano, uh, coaching uh, adventure. Like, where did it start? Where, what sparked your interest into coaching? Okay, so there's uh, a bit of a lag. Uh, coach, um, would you like me to, ano, to ask the question again? It's about your ano, coaching experience, uh, if you can hear me. Can you give us a brief history of your coaching experience? Uh, uh, thank you. That's uh, uh, an interesting question. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I would like to... I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, coach. Coach, you're just a bit lag, coach. Hello? All right. 
Okay, yeah. Uh, please bear with me. My internet is uh, is slow. Not that I'm not paying my bills. I'm paying my bills. It's only that uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's it's slow. <laughs> now, um, my experience the, uh, as a coach, the way I started, um, it, it's it's just like uh, uh, most people who play volleyball, and uh, uh, I remember actually. I used to advise um, my uh, uh, in the process. That's how I started coaching. I was uh, in my late twenties and early thirties. I started um, uh, coaching. Uh, I took a side job as a coach of the University of Nairobi, and uh, I continued coaching them while while playing. Then. Uh, So siguro balikan na lang muna natin Brian si Coach Godi when she, when he comes back no. Yeah, so actually, I'll give it to you muna. Actually Andy I wanted to ask some questions on social media. Medyo intriga ako rito eh from ano eh. Let's start with this one. The question is addressed to um, Andy. Um, okay. <laughs> oh my god. That's why it's really fun. <laughs> And then can you uh, explain this? <laughs> I'll disconnect now. <po. laughs> Next uh, question, please. <laughs> no comment, no comment, ba? <laughs> no, no, no. Po. Oh Sorry, God. Steve. I always eh. no comment. <laughs> I tried. Well, I just tried. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Eh, pero anting sin ah, de wala. Oh, ito, ito naman may tanong kay kay Mai, si Gab Ferreras. Nag-host ka rin di ba ng isang sports podcast, May? Somewhat related to some Iloilo sports personalities? Ah, uh, yes po. Yes. Right. Um, naging us? co-host ako sa sports lang, Iloilo sports lang, which is mm. somehow similar to this po. So we um, <laughs> interview uh, some of the athletes, um, dati, former athletes and athletes until now, na mga elongas. So we promote them. Just like what you're doing din po. O oh, Andy, pwede pala kunin host to eh. Ano ka ba? Pinintay mo. <laughs> Singer at saka host. Oh, Yun, oh, si- no? Ay, o nga pala. Since sample. you mentioned it, can we have a sample of your lovely singing voice? Sir, hindi po siya lovely. Promise. <laughs> Wag na lang po. <laughs> Acapella, Brian. Acapella. Acapella ba? Sir, <laughs> wag na lang po. Promise. <laughs> Ayan na oh, si Kocho Kumo. So, Kocho Kumo. <laughs> like, ganun na. Oh, sige. Okay. So, back to Coach. Yeah, Hi, go Coach. ahead, Andy. Continue, to con- continue your answer to on the same question, Coach. Yeah, we'll just wait a bit. May konting lag lang. Hi, Coach. Okay, so we'll go back to Coach Godi again once he's, he's back. Pero we'll go back to you girls. So hindi ako yung nag-hot seat sa inyo, ha? Yung mga nag, nag, ano, nag-chat. Ako, mga ma, ma, madali lang mga tanong ko, ha? <laughs> so, Actually, Andy, may sumagod. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and and wala kang... pa, paano to? Wala kang pamasko sa akin? Ano? What, ano na, naiintriga ako ah. Ano to? Ano to? Ano to, Andy? Can you shed light on this? Naglag si Andy bigla. <laughs> Pwede ba siyang i-mute? <laughs> <laughs> Pinapa-mute kayo. Eh, no? <laughs> Let's get uh, Let's ask this question from ano to the girls, Andy. Yung kay Joel Valencia. Go ahead. Uh, so nga, ito. Does FIVB book manuals still emphasize on static stretching as start uh, as ano, a starting point of warm up, even though there are several studies that showed it is not significant for injury prevention? Let's start with my. Um. 
for me as a sports science major po and syempre under coach Eman din coach Eman usually emphasizes dynamic stretching po di ba anding i ano mo ako i back up mo ako dynamic yes. stretching kasi um anong explanation natin doon anding <laughs> <laughs> Kaya mo yan, Maiko. No, but I feel like also it differs per player because uh-huh. each athlete, parang it's up to you. Like, if you feel warmed up enough, if it's through static stretching or dynamic stretching, as long as you feel that you can perform your best, then that's the kind of warm-up you do for yourself. Yeah. All right. So, may follow-up si Joel Valencia. Does, do, does coaches still practice these static stretching in their warm-up? Rather, putting is putting a significant recovery cool-down? Andi, ikaw na muna. Nandiyan ka na rin. Me po, coach. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yun nga, like Mai said, we usually do dynamic stretches because um, our coach believes na it's the most, um, how do I say this? It's the most, like, optimal way of warming us up. And, um, we do static stretches, yun nga, mostly in cool down na. And then um, we, we usually ice ourselves. That's the kind of warm up cool down that we do. Okay. Bago ko, bago ko pumunta kay, ano, kay Mai, kinakabahan ba si Anding pag nasa loob ng court? <laughs> that's, ano, Kuya Paolo, um, Coach Andy, that's um, the player from JRU that you mentioned. Yeah, and he's actually the person that I open up to because diba, he really plays well inside the court and he's the one who advises me na parang magkakumpiyansa ka lang sa sarili mo because it's like I open up to him na kuya, kinakabahan talaga ako sa loob ng court, hindi ako magagalaw, ganun. But um, yun, he's a good cousin for giving me advice and telling me na just believe in myself because a lot of people believe in me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My... Shout out kay Boss Paolo. <laughs> May, paano to? Anong gagawin ko rito? May humihingi talaga ng sample, yun. Eh. <laughs> Ay, naglag ako. <laughs> naglag ka bigla. Wala. Sir, wag na po. Kasi Ay. hindi talaga siya lovely. Promise. Eh, ano ganito, la- ganito, na- ganito ang deal natin kay, ano, kay, ano, kay May, auntie. Pag madami ang nag-comment na ma- kumanta si Mike, kailangan kumanta siya. Go na tayo dyan. Oh. Ngayon ah, pa lang marami sige. na yun. Oh. Pagka umabot ng ano, ilan? 10, 20 comments na ano? hashtag natin. Guys, comment na okay. kayo. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> Ako na magko-comment. Right oh, yeah, yeah. Bobby, Bobby, hindi <laughs> pwede ikaw. <laughs> ah, okay. Fine. Comment, guys. <laughs> hashtag, ano? Ano ba magandang hashtag dyan? Anding, anong magandang hashtag dyan? Uh, hashtag, ano? Uh, sing. Sing with my. Oh. Sing with my. Hashtag, sing with my. Ayan. Oh, okay. Ayan. So may sasabay sa'yo. Oh, yeah, yeah. They will also sing. sing oh, yeah. Even coach is saying you should sing. Oh, yeah. Oh, ito. Ito, ito yung hashtag. I, 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 this is the hashtag, Kakan Asimai. I, I, I hope my internet is stable now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, let's go back to Coach first. Kasi nagigrill masyado yung mga girls. Yeah, before before it disappears again. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Mm. Ano. Um, Andy, go ahead. Andy, Mike. Mike. Coach, we'll continue the question kanina. This is a follow-up question. How did you uh, become aware of uh, UP and how did you ano, uh, get to experience uh, to go to UP and to coach there? Can you give us a, a little ano, um, information about that? Yes, it was a, a good adventure for me. Um, uh, I used to have uh, some of the... Uh, Coaches from the Philippines. We used to work together in uh, uh, during uh, volunteer work. I used to come to the Philippines to do volunteer work, and sometimes we'd meet in the FIVB uh, volleyball uh, coaching courses. 
So I made friends with some of the uh, the coaches, and the, one of them was Coach Jerry, uh, who is my friend, and we uh, became friends. I kept on coming to UP to help and uh, assist. Then uh, it came a time where they wanted to train. Then we invited them to, to Japan, to the school that I used to coach. And uh, I saw the team, and I believed uh, the team had potential. And uh, it was a good team. Uh, I loved the way the players were. And we became friends uh, with the coaching staff and the, the players. And um, that's when I fell in love with the UP as a team. And uh, from there, uh, it's just been a roller coaster. Yeah, so, but it was not easy for me to, to, to come to the Philippines because the story is a bit long. Uh, some of the players were very close friends with my daughter. They're like 22, the same age. And uh, they wanted me really to come to, to work uh, for UP. But uh, my answer was always like, no, I can't do it because I needed to stay uh, in Japan and work and uh, take care of my daughter. But then my daughter had already uh, graduated from high school. She was uh, starting to play professional volleyball. And uh, I told them to convince her, talk to her. I told the players to talk to her. If she says yes, then <laughs> I could uh, just come to the Philippines. Though I was really in love with the, uh, the team, I was ready to, to come and join them and uh, work with them. And uh, to me, I think it's like a dream that came true. And uh, to, to cap it all up is uh, because of uh, the studies as well. Yeah, and uh, I, I like studying, I like reading. And I thought, yes, why don't I settle for both? Uh, I work as a coach and uh, uh, study. But uh, the biggest thing is love for UP. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, coach, for that answer. Um, going to uh, ano the players naman. Um, I'll start with you muna, Anding. Haba nagintay, nag nagisip pa si Mike ano kakanta niyo mamaya. So, Anding, yung again second generation player. Your mom was uh, one of the best mm -hmm. players in UP uh, during her time. In fact, um. The, the UP team back then were really good the same way now as it is before, only different different decades. And uh, Coach, uh, Coach Okumu has done a very good job in, uh, in the start of ano, his career in UP to make sure that UP uh, excelled in the UAAP. So in your case naman, na ang galing nung mother mo, and now you're in UP, and playing for the the school that she also played for, um, how do you feel about it, knowing that there is a connection there? Of course, I feel great about it. Po. It's like um passing on a legacy to me, I guess, in a way. And yun nga, like I mentioned, having her parang paved the way for me to be able to be where I am right now is really a blessing. And by God's grace, I'm really thankful that I am able to play for UP and study in UP and be here. Um, like I said also a while ago, na her being and like decades ago, her being in the same place that I am, she has taught me you know, the values that I need to know to be able to perform, I guess, uh, perform in academics, in um, sports, and it really has helped me. Um, it has shaped me to be the person that I am. And you know, your your family is very, uh, no, not, they, they are not only very excellent in sports in general, your family and the siblings of your mom. Pero your, all, your Lolo and Lola are really fanatics of, yes. uh, <laughs> of your, you, uh, you and uh, no, their kids, yung mga apo nila, they always watch the game, especially uh, your your mom and your tita Noemi Ponteso, Ponteso, who also played for UP. I remember yes. your grandfather was watching yes, Noemi Daddy. play and he got mad at the ref because uh, the referee <laughs> called a bad yes. play. He took yes. his shoe and threw it inside the court. 
So that was how mad he was because yeah. the opponent got the point instead of your tita's team. So yeah. tell me something about that. Why are is your team so um, invested <laughs> in in all of them? You're being siblings, being yung mga apo, yung mga pamangkin. Uh, why? What is it about your ano family that is so invested in sports? I feel like just in general, our family is really very supportive of each other, of whatever we may do. We just have each other's backs. And it's just, it's a good feeling to know that no matter what happens, they're always going to be there. Family is always going to be there supporting you and rooting for you no matter what happens. And yeah, it's just a good time to remember daddy because he really is so passionate about supporting us. In every, ga- in every game, he tries to be there and cheers us on. Him and mommy, uh, Lola mommy, our grandparents. And I guess they've showed, the way that they've showed that support, that's why our parents and my titos and titas also show their support to their children, no matter what it is they choose to do. Yeah. Okay. So shout out to the ano, Pontejos, yes. ano? Uh, clan. <laughs> so, punta naman tayo sa yung mai kasi similar din yung ano mo. Your parents are athletic also. Diba? So, first, before you tell your story, baka you could give us their names para ma shout out naman natin. Um, so, my dad po was like one of the parang. Um, sought out player when he was in college. So his name was Mark Anthony Sotomil. Parang, and also my mom is a volleyball player when she was in college too. Si Ria Sotomil. Yeah. Where did they play when they, it was their time uh, in college? Um, uh, alam niyo po ba yung ano, Iloilo Doctors College po? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. During my dad's time, actually, they won like um, several championships in the uni games. Can you tell us what year this was so we have a little ano, knowledge of the timeline? I don't know po eh. <laughs> I think 1998, 1997. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a good year. That was a good year for Ilo Ilo Doctors. One of the best uh, teams in uh, ano, in uh, Visayas, correct? Okay. Yeah. So, kwento mo naman sa amin yung how, how did their experience as athletes affect you as a player and affect you as growing up in general? Um, actually po, my dad was my first coach and I like that he's, ano, parang hindi siya complacent sa akin. Um, like when we're inside the court, he doesn't treat me like his daughter <laughs> kasi nga player talaga yung ano. So, ako pa parati yung pinapagalitan kaysa sa ibang members and I get it po na gusto niya ako makita mag-improve. Yeah, and growing right. up po with, um, an aesthetic family, Yun nga, like Anding, they're very supportive. They're my number one fans. And of course, if merong time na, if they see something wrong or if they see some improvements pa na kaya kong gawin, is yun, sinasabihan din po nila ako. And I'm really thankful na ganun sila ka supportive sa akin. So I'm sure hanggang ngayon, eh, sinusuportahan ka pa nila, whether by watching you on TV or yes. ano, watching you live in the, yeah. in the court. So dun sa pamilya nyo, aside from your parents, who are, who, who are also athletic sa family nyo? Uh, yung mga cousins mo, yung siblings? Um, may both of my brothers po, my older and my younger brother are volleyball players then. Yeah. And I think some of my cousins also are into sports, pero like, hindi sila nag-varsity. Parang for recreation lang. Yeah. So, itayo mo ang bandera ng Iloilo. <laughs> no? So, before I continue, ibabalik ko muna kay Brian. Sigurado ko babalik mo sa akin. <laughs> Oo, kasi... Uh, maraming ano comments eh. <laughs> eh ang problema ay ng mga girls yung mga comments. Eh. 
yeah, and then, anyway, let's. I'd I like to go to coach because, uh, coach, when you when you were here earlier, um, I asked yes. the girls this this question from uh, Joel uh, Villanueva. I um actually I don't know what he wants me to ask, but I think it's that the thing about the uh, no, the static stretching. I think this. Uh, okay. okay, can you weigh in on that? Yeah, what what the the the, the uh, I was here when the question was 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 thrown in. I I think um, uh, static static training was something of the past, and uh, with the current. Uh, uh research as we continue and if you look at volleyball volleyball is a dynamic sport mm -hmm. which uh, needs uh a, an indiv individual or a player to be mobile so uh i would always and uh, i have a very talented uh, a great strength and conditioning coach uh coach eman papam as a ending at the expressed i mean uh, uh he knows his work well, and that's how we go. Um, dynamic stretching is very important, yeah, because of the, the the way volleyball is as a sport. It's a dynamic sport where you have to move. It's not like something that uh, you stand still. And uh, uh, I think the current, the modern uh, style is uh, uh, dynamic stretching. Yeah. And, and as, as we continue study, there'll be more evidence and probably ideas might change. But uh, uh, to me, I would uh, go for uh, dynamic stretching. Mm. All, right. All right, coach. And here's another one. Well, I'd like to touch on this also. Is how much, um, well, how much sets of plyometric exercises would you say is enough? Uh, once, once more? Uh, how much sets of plyometric exercises would you say is enough? I think this, this is uh, for the players, but as a coach, I'd like to get your comments on this. Mm, plyometric, uh, I think it depends. To me, I think it depends on the on on what you want to achieve, all right? And uh, you can choose to work, continue working with it, or you can choose to to just do it uh, uh, shortly, depending mm -hmm. on uh, your target, what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, yeah, like uh, uh, you can do it like, uh, what we used to do, we do, it, do used to do it like two or three times a week. Uh, and then most probably, uh, usually when we are doing our strength and conditioning, that's when we, we put it in our, our training with the strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, but again, it depends on what you want to achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, how, uh, what your target is. If you you have a higher target, if your players, for example, uh, you have a, a bunch of guys who don't jump high. So you keep on pushing them until they reach that, uh, that level, until uh, they can do it. Yeah, but uh, uh, again, I was, I'll say it's optional. It's not written that you have to have 20 or 60 or 100 yeah all right coach okay okay coach here's a, a question uh, oh yes you go ahead Mai. Um, go ahead Mai. go ahead Mai. um based on the experience po as a player because uh, plyometric exercises um includes exercises na you exert maximum maximum effort in a short span of time so usually po we do um plyometric exercises parang um short repetitions lang pero parang minsan pinapadamihan yung number of sets but then importante yung rest in between kasi um mabilis ma burn out or mabilis kami ma fatigue sa plyometric exercises yun to all right how about you ending do you have anything to chat no? to add to that yes um i i agree with them that we um, cause when you do plyometric exercises, it's maximum power and maximum speed. So if you overdo it, it can cause injury. It can do more harm than good. So a good a, enough number of sets, like three three sets, or you do a lot of reps, but minimum number of sets, as long as you don't overdo it, is good. Okay. So I'd like to go back to coach. <laughs> Yes, coach, 
Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask, uh, given this situation we're in right now, has this how has this affected your preparations? I mean, I mean, um, what major adjustments did you have to do when it comes to the training and um, communicating with your players? How has it uh, affected you as a team? Uh, about the the current situation. Yes, the pandemic. Uh, wow, it's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and uh, we kind of are losing two generations of, 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 of players, you know, like group of players. We had the, the year 82, which we only had two games. Mm -hmm. Then already we lost that band, like uh, I would say Issa's group. Mm -hmm. And then now we have another band, uh, 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 group that we are losing due mm -hmm. to there's no uh, year 83. Mm -hmm. So uh when we the next game probably will play year 84 so you'd find you'd realize that um uh some of the players that uh, we've known for years some of them we've only trained with them for six months and uh, uh before the pandemic and so uh what i'll say is it's been a challenge uh, a big challenge but uh, again i will say uh thanks to the players they we understand each other we do most of our training online there are people who don't have enough space yeah. uh so what we do here is to probably give them ball handling training uh our strength and conditioning coach would give them um, uh, physical uh, fitness activities to do mm -hmm. uh we meet maybe uh once a month or sometimes uh, twice depending on the situation but uh, as a coach, it has not been easy because you can't coach online. You know, volleyball is something practical. Yeah, you have to practice. It's something that you have to do, something that we do. And uh, uh, at the moment, we have no choice. But yes. the interesting thing is um, I know we have uh, a talent. We have uh, a very good team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we are the strongest contenders uh uh next year a couple of years to come the next uap i think we 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 have a, a well disciplined the team a team that has a, a self respect they listen and uh, they follow and uh, they are very strong uh mentally so we are working together and i believe that um, we will fly high in the coming uh, years all right, coach. You mentioned earlier that the season last season ended abruptly. Um, in any way, was this frustrating for you because some of the other players are no longer around? You cannot uh, use them anymore. Is this a bit frustrating? Did this, uh, it, it, yeah, yes, it it, it is uh, really really frustrating because uh, uh, you look at uh, you know in every system, it's like you have a bunch of guys leaving and a group coming in. So it's supposed to be like, you know, uh, a continuous thing. But you see, like now, all of a sudden it broke. So some of our upcoming players, they might find it challenging to, to, to follow a certain system. You can only follow a system when you see it being done and, you know, being practiced. But like now it ended uh, abruptly. So it's quite a challenge and it's so frustrating. But again, what I will say is, we have no choice. And I will say in life, uh, everybody has a, their graph and the graph was drawn. Maybe this is how it was meant to be for us. But uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's a good challenge for us as coaches. Uh, everything is in the same uh, le level, level field, you know, like we are in the same level now where uh, we can't say that team has been training more or this team has not trained more. So when we are, we are given okay to start training, I believe uh, we will be able to to give our best and uh, be where we want to be, the strongest contenders. But just to say this, uh, it wasn't easy and it's still not easy for some of the players because they keep on asking, hey coach, when are we gonna go back? When are we gonna start training? And uh, I keep on saying the same thing. Now it's becoming an excuse that the government has to give us an okay. Mm. We have to wait for UAP, uh, 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 the body to decide when we should go. So 
but we, we keep on hoping against hope that it will happen soon, that we'll be able to go back and start uh, playing the ball. Yeah. All right, coach. I'd like to ask also the uh, Anding and my first. Let's go to Anding. <clears throat> how was it? How was this been? Has changed you? I mean, the way you train, and like uh, your season ended abruptly. Was this? Uh, did the kapag may ill feelings ka ba with what happened last season? Uh, of course, it's hard and it's sad. Um, the thing, uh, everything that's happened right now, but. It's not something that we can control. But what we can control is what we do about it and how we react to the situation. So it's definitely harder right now because you have the choice. Eh? You can always say, now, oh, I did the program, but you didn't really do it. So I guess this pandemic has taught us and has highlighted the values that we have, like discipline towards the sport, the commitment we have with um, our teammates, with the coaches, and yeah, overall it has been hard, but it's there's always it's always a choice and it's there's always something that we can control and do about it. All right. How about you, Mai? Um yun nga po, I've mentioned that this pandemic is really stressful po. And especially na um from last season, like we did a lot of preparations, we even went to Japan uh, to train. And bigla na lang na, alam mo yun, na temporarily na stop lahat. And I wasn't expecting that that would be the last time na we'll be able to play with our seniors. So parang it's really stressful knowing na ganun yung situation. But then, yun nga, sabi ni Anding, we just need to control yung mga things na pwede natin makontrol. And that is, um, like, if we're given a um, program for, for the week, we usually do it. And before, um, it's really s- stressful po. Paano kami mag-adjust from being physically active to like um, do physical activities lang for once or twice a week. But then, um, it really comes down to the discipline and commitment that you have for the team and for the sport that you love. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll give it back to Andy. I would I would want to add something on what uh, Maya great. said great. about great. yeah tra- training in Japan. I think I I I'd say this. I forgot to say that that is the most frustrating thing because you prepare so much, all right, and then uh, things don't stop. You know, all of a sudden everything stops, and um, uh, you spend a lot, and then eventually uh, there's nothing uh, that you're giving. There's no. Um, what can I say? It's like we spent a lot. We put a lot in our training. Uh, we spent a lot, and eventually we couldn't show guess why we were spending all this time and all this money in training and other things. Uh, that's one. Uh, the other thing is also like um, uh, some of our seniors, we couldn't play with them. For example, my team captain, Rosie. Rosie could be the only captain that has never played in, in, in the UAP as a captain because we started playing and then the games were called off. And uh, uh, probably because she's on her final year, probably she might not play uh, UAP anymore. So it's really frustrating. As a coach, it's so uh, annoying, you know, like uh, such a talented player and uh, somebody with so much charisma doesn't have a chance to to play. But again, we have no choice. That's how life is. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right, Andy. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Uh, balik tayo dito kay Mai. Uh, Mai, this question naman ano, is connected to your playing sa UP. Kasi, um, first of all, how did you feel nung nalaman mo na officially na napupunta ka na sa ano sa UP when you were still in ano Bacolod Taytong? Oh, so it was ano po, it was Ribisco National Ribisco Finals in Laguna when um I think an agent from nowhere to go but up approached Sir Boy and that's when Sir Boy told me na UP wants me to be part of the team na and then I didn't hesitate po na magu UP ako because it's it's UP. And 
ayun um I'm thankful na I got the opportunity to play sa UAP and also other leagues like the PVL and PSL and ayun I think na ako nag mature talaga ako not just as a player but also as an individual Okay. Yung, what was your ano, uh, image of UP before when when you were still in ano, in high school? Ano yung image niya eh, in your mind before you got in UP? Um, I think like there was a lot of pressure on my side po kasi um, ako as a, as a student athlete, I'm also grade conscious. So, knowing UP, UP is like really academically um hard or challenging mga students. So, I think it was a good pressure then. But, like, so when it comes to volleyball naman po, I really don't, like, put a lot of pressure on myself. Kasi, parang, di ba, um, my mindset was, my mindset before was to, like, prove to Coach Kumo and to other coaches na I'm deserving, uh, I deserve a spot in the lineup. Pero I don't pressure myself na to be part of the lineup agad on my first year but um gladly i was able to um have a spot in the lineup oh, okay so when you were already playing for up and uh you started and all these tournaments uh, na sinalihan mo mamili ka nga ng isang game na masasabi mo na nabigay mo yung best mo so far um I think for me, the, uh, one of the most memorable game na I played under UP is yung semifinals po namin against Adamson University and PVL. So, yung first game po kasi nun is top four kami. And then Adamson was like number one. So, parang kung sino yung mananalo dun is magfa-finals. So I didn't really expect that Coach Okumo will put me as a starting setter for that game. But we were like practicing naman na ako yung nagsaset. But I wasn't really expecting that Coach Okumo will like trust me, trust a rookie to um, set the tone and set the game and set the offense of our team sa game na yon. Because it's really crucial. Because ano yun eh, semifinals na yun. And then gladly we won. So I'm really, I think, of you. Yun yung just si coach na sa kwento. Because I I wasn't really expecting coach. Because you know I'm a rookie and then it was a crucial game talaga. So I just did my best and I just followed coaches Okumo, uh, coaches Okumo's instruction. So yun nanalo kami. Buti na lang. <laughs> That's Why a, are you that's scared? That's a nice story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a nice scared? story. No, coach, because it, I, just like what I said, it, it was a crucial game, and then okay, never mind. <laughs> no, but you see, okay, the, the reason uh, did I explain this to you? Uh, when we look at Adamson, the way they were playing, uh, they they have learned. They knew how Ayel was played. They knew how our other players were playing. But you are the new guy. You are the one who had your different style. And we thought, once we put you in, you will be bringing different mix. And that's why, as a coach, I trusted and I believed. You know, as a coach, you have to believe in something for it to happen. As, I think Coach Andy also knows this. If you don't believe in it, it will not happen. So you have to believe in it. And I believe this would happen. And then after, then I thought, okay, Ayel would go back. So while they are thinking, you put in my, then you put in Ayel. So it's keep on like, you know, you don't give them something to think about. You don't give them to have their plan. Yeah, so that was the the trick. And um, I'm happy that it worked. Yeah, but thanks for that. <laughs> so, uh, hanggang ngayon, nagko-coach pa rin si Coach Okumo. <laughs> so, yeah, those were good <laughs> ano, uh, good words from uh, you, from Coach Okumo. So, thank you for that, Coach. Um Tuloy natin yung tanong sa iyo, Anding. Yung ano kasi yung syempre yung ano, marami ka na ring leagues na na paglaruan. 
under ano wearing the UP uniform. So give us one of your best games and tell us uh, how it felt and what happened. Um, honestly, for coach, I feel like I haven't given my best yet. Um, but I have, um, I have played games that. Uh, for experiences because coach is really trying to expose me since I'm moving from um, being a middle blocker to an open spiker. So it really is a big change. So I, I am still, I am still looking forward to the day that I can say that I have given my best in a game and hopefully um, in the next year, like when face-to-face -face, um, training and games can be allowed now. I can say that I have played the game that I've given my best. So, how about you? I know you from middle blocker. Uh, I I've seen you play in high school also for CSA as a middle blocker. Then you shift to outside hitter. How how is that for you? Oh, uh, where is your I know uh, mentality in in that shift? Yeah, it's definitely been a challenge especially with uh, re having to receive because the bow when you're a middle blocker you're usually uh, you usually um replaced by the libero so that they can receive for you but since i um became an open spiker coach Okomo has had to like train me from scratch and i had to go back to zero learn how to receive the ball properly learn the timing of an open spiker i always lose my timing because as a middle blocker i always go for quick so i always i'm always too early but you know with constant training constant exposure to the game hopefully i'll be able to play as an efficient open hitter all right so i know ito naman yung connected din to kay my i i can add something about adding go ahead coach go ahead, go ahead coach. i i believe uh, as a coach uh you see uh before uh, anding joined up i spoke to her and i told her uh we would want her to play outside and the reason why i want middle players to play outside is we want to have the the fast volleyball they shoot the moving balls you know and you can only do this when you have your middles people are playing middles who are playing outside if they can run the same system it will be much much more are uh, easier uh, and they're challenging for the opponents to to block and to defend. So this is what we've been working on. And uh, Honos is speaking. I know Anding is trying to be polite. She doesn't want to say this, but she's one of our players who has, has improved almost 100% from the time she started playing until where she is now. And uh, I believe you will uh, be able to interview her here, maybe after year 84. And maybe she'll be telling you her best game. Those are nice words, coach, uh, to your players. But uh, you shifting George. now, yeah, shifting now to you, I know, coach Okumu. Um, oh. You've been coaching here in the Philippines for a fairly long time. And I know you're also a level three FIVB coach. And you also are licensed in Japan to coach there, uh, and you and you took a uh, you took a course and you had to pass it to be a level three coach in FIVB, and a licensed coach in Japan. Can you give us your comment on uh, what type of um, um, system could be used here in the Philippines? Would could be similar to Japan to organize the coaches here in the Philippines? Uh, okay, I hope you're ready to listen. It's a long story. It's gonna take like the give, whole two hours. Gi give, me the, uh, give me the two minute version, coach. <laughs> <laughs> of one hour. All right. What I'll say is this: uh, the system in Japan. The difference between how uh, the systems work in Japan and in the Philippines is that uh, in the Philippines, every person, every coach, everywhere you go, they have their own different system. The reason why I was licensed in Japan to be able to, 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 to coach is that they train you through a system. You have to qualify. You have to get that certificate. So as a coach, they will ask you to do practical work, volleyball coach. This is how we want you to train young learners. This is how we train uh, in high school. 
So you have to find a way to adapt. So you find that there's one way that fits all as a coach. So my idea, when I came to the Philippines, I tried talking to some of these, uh, the coaches, and I hope some of them are listening out there. Uh, I'm not trying to condemn anybody, but I was saying, I discussed this with so many coaches. I said, why don't you have a system, uh, a way that we have a, a bunch of coaches who are very good at what they do. Let's learn, okay? We have the Japanese system, we have the American system, we have the, the European system, all these teams. Even the, the Koreans, the way they pass the ball, some teams take the ball away from the body, some teams align themselves to the ball, some teams backpedal to, to pass. So every where you go, they have different system of playing. So what I'm saying is Philippines can also develop its own system of playing, okay? You take the Japanese system, then you look at the way some of the players play and then meet in between and create something that fits the Filipino as, as, as a volleyball uh, uh, community or for, uh, as, a, as a volleyball fraternity. That is what I, I would like to say. And uh, we can only do this uh, when we accept, when we come to an agreement that we have to have one system. We have to have a coaching commission that is uh, respected and that can run and, uh, and uh, uh, accept to do uh, this kind of uh, work. It's not easy, okay? There has to be one system and there has to be a uh, qualification. You have to pass to be able to be recognized by the coaching commission or the sports commission that you are a volleyball coach and you've done this course as a coach and you can be allowed to coach. But in this case, you find uh, places where somebody is because he's a PE teacher, he just takes the school and start coaching. So sometimes you get players they are very good spikers, but their other basic volleyball, basic information about volleyball is very raw. Sometimes you find they can pass, but their spiking skills is still uh, below average. So this is what happens. So if we have one system, uh, one size, like one size fits all, then I, I believe that uh, we can have good foundation and good uh, fundamentals for, for young volleyball learners. This is the most important thing. Uh, we forget about the, the people are playing UAP now. We start from the guys in junior high school, kids who are 10, uh, 13, 14. So this is where we should start uh, from and uh, create the correct fundamentals. And then also encourage uh, uh, young tall players to play volleyball. You know, this is also the other thing. We find we have tall players who go to play basketball, maybe they play netball. But if we can find a way to bring these tall players who are like six feet or tall, slightly tall, then we can uh, be able to have a, a, a very, very competitive team. I believe uh, if you look at the features of the Filipino, just like, like Kenya, you see like in the Kenya team, you have girls who are taller than me. They have uh, they have long reach, you know. So they are kind of basically have the structure of, of a good volleyball uh, player. But are we taking advantage of that? I don't think so. So we just have to start from that tender young age. Yeah. Thank you, Coach, for that very educational uh, comment. And uh, I'm sure uh, some of the coaches who are watching us uh, uh, have heard your message. Um, I'll just redirect again to to Mai for, for this question. Mai, kasi, um, my question to you is, you're not one of the tallest in your team right now. Pero you are very talented in your position. Uh, that's very obvious. So, paano mo nako compensate naman yung, yung ano mo, yung yung sa height mo, paano mo nako compensate when you get inside the court? Ano yung talagang pinipinupursige mo to do your best at? Um, ako po, to be honest, my height has always been my greatest insecurity. And, coach, stop laughing. This is, I'm gonna cry. So, yun nga, greatest insecurity ko is my height. And I know, um, when you have a height, especially when you're a setter, it's really 
a big advantage sa iyo and sa team mo. But then, yun nga, hindi ako binayayaan ng height. Um, I usually compensate it with, like, doing other stuff like um, uh, floor defense and, of course, my setting. So, yun po, I really believe kasi na it's not how big you are, it's how big you play the game. So, that's my confidence statement all throughout my years in playing in UP. Kasi ang tataas talaga ng players sa UP. So, ayun, um... I do, like, binabawi ko siya sa depensa. And of course, mas pinuporsigi ko na maging accurate and consistent yung setting ko. Ngayon po. Okay, so kung ano yung, w- what you didn't get in height, you got in the size of your heart. Yun yun eh. Doon na punta yun eh. Di ba? <laughs> Tapos yung talent <laughs> din, no? Sir Brian. <laughs> Ay, ano? Saka yung talent. Diba? Hashtag. Ay, hashtag o nga eh. Hanggang ngayon, meron pa rin eh. Wala, wala na sir. Meron. So lovely. Oo. Oh. Hang- hanggang, alam mo ba hanggang YouTube may nagko-comment? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yun. So, eto na, ano, my final question is for Anding. Anding, what, what do you feel that Um, yung going into a season, hopefully there's a, uh, the UAAP season will still continue uh, this coming ano, season na darating. If, it, if it's ano, sure na na may season na darating, what do you hope to, to show to yourself um, to, to, for, for people also to see how good you are? I mean, what do you have any kunyari, areas in your game you want to improve so that you could give more or to contribute more for your team? Um, I honestly feel like I still need to improve in all aspects of my game. Um, when it comes to from receiving, to serving, to spiking. And I feel like it's a good thing to always think that you still have areas that you need to improve on because, you know, that means you, that you have a goal and that you have a purpose that you want to fulfill. So I, I hopefully, in the coming season, if I, um, by God's grace, I'll be um, included in, the, in any lineup of any league, I'll surely do my best and I'll train my best to be able to prove to people and prove to myself, most especially, that I can do it, that I can Um, do my best and that I can um, help the team win. Shout out to oh, Noemi <laughs> and Andy and the rest of your family. Yes. Shout out also Sila lang to... ata yung nagko-comment sa akin. <laughs> <laughs> Pati sa live, supportive sila. <laughs> Full support kahit saan. Sa court man o yes. online. Shout, actually, shout actually, out pinap- din. Pinap- Go ahead. Pinap- Pinapakanta rin si Andy. Pinapa- <laughs> Meron ka bang hidden talent of singing also? Me po? Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> yung mga nagko-comment. Si Mai Kaya nagdudukat kaya tayo, Anding. Huwag ka oh. na. Ako, oo. Oh. Buko na. Buko na. <laughs> Ay, may huwag mo akong idamay, ah. <laughs> Damaya na. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, before I give it to you, Brian, shout out lang sa ano, ano, the Sotomil family and to the ano, uh, Pontejos Lagman family and to your family also, Coach Okumu, to Coach ano, Otep uh, Gallardo, eh, ano, Coach o- Eman Papa, and uh, to my brother Mark Fields watching right now. So, balik ko sa iyo, Brian. Actually, uh, speaking of your brother, meron siyang interesting question here thrown to Coach uh, Anding and Mai. So, ang, ang question niya is, question for all, who is your favorite foreign player? So, I'd like to ask Coach to go first. <laughs> uh, well, in, here in the Philippines or outside? Um, I think it's foreign, Coach. I mean... International. Yeah, not, not okay because they are foreigners who play in the Philippines. Oh, okay, uh, sorry. Now, a foreign player would say it's my daughter. That's my favorite player. Oh. I'm, I'm our fan number one. She plays for Hitachi. Uh, uh, she's uh, been there for the last uh, three years now. Mm. So, to me, that's uh, my number one player. I'm not being uh, like because I'm the father, but 
I'm just happy that she makes me proud as a coach and the, the way she's been working hard. She's been through a lot. She already had the, a torn Achilles tendon. She had a, a, a torn uh, a calf muscle and she went back and uh, played. So to me, that's uh, uh, my favorite play. I know people might not know her, but uh, if you Google her, you'll uh, learn more about her. Yeah, so that's what I'll say uh, for now. But the best play in the world, uh, I for now, I really can't say because we've been out of volleyball for the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. I mean, two years. And uh, we can't judge, you know, by people practicing or staying at home. Yeah, so, yeah. But I, when it comes to a team, I think and I feel like Italy has a chance of winning the Olympics, mm -hmm. followed by China. That's my prediction. Thank you. All right. George, any chance you'll see your daughter play here in the Philippines? In the <laughs> Maybe when she plays against the Philippines. All right. <laughs> <laughs> in the future uh okay. we, you, ne you never know yeah thank you all right coach thank you so much okay mike how about you mike ah, okay. um <laughs> my idol coach is everyone's idol when it comes to setting of course the famous nutsara from thailand I love her setting kasi um, sobrang accurate ng sets niya. It's like the same height and the same speed every time she sets the ball. And also, I really love how um, she like, she puts like different modifications sa, set, sa settings and sa place niya. And it's like, parang pag nagsiset siya, parang... Paano niya ginagawa yan? <laughs> ano ba yung kamay niya? And yun, yung mga adjustments niya, kahit, ma, kahit like so, sobrang lapit ng bola sa net, nakukuha niya pa din na iset with accuracy. So yun, I really look up to her. All right. And finally, Andy. As a medal player before, I'd say Plumjit. She's also a Thai volleyball player, and we actually got the chance of watching her play live and in person when we went to Thailand um, two or three years ago. So yeah, it's it's great watching her play live um, online, but it was just such a different and great experience watching her actually in person playing her game. So yeah, she's my favorite foreign player. All right. So, um, I'll throw my final question, actually. It's more of a, well, I guess everybody's heard of this. Um, it's about uh, Jaja being called uh, to Japan because it's being considered for naturalization. Could I uh, uh, get your input on that? I'd like to start with Coach, uh, with coach first. About uh, Jaja? Yeah, the Japan thing. Because we were talking yeah. about Japan. It just popped up. <laughs> okay. yeah, Jaja, Jaja is uh, she's a very very good player uh, since she went to Japan she improved a lot uh, you could see the kind of discipline that she has as a middle player when she's playing uh, the, the idea of asking I, this is what I, I know uh, the idea of asking Jaja to, to play uh, to take Japan nationality, nationality was to first to be able to make a play as a local in the clubs yeah. so they can bring in a third uh, professional player in the uh, Ageo team. Okay. Uh, second, yeah, uh, probably two years along the line or three years along the line, she could still play for, for Japan because uh, as you look at the height of the middle players in Japan, she's still uh, like a, a giant, you know, in Japan. Mm -hmm. yeah, she's kind of tall. 
So that could be uh, the other reason. But uh, I would say this, uh, she, she has really pr- improved. She plays very, very good volleyball. And uh, where she, um, if you look at the spike, where she's catching the ball, the meat is so high. And uh, that's what every coach would dream of uh, from a player. And I hope uh, in the next, uh, is it South East Asian Games? If she has a chance, I, I hope uh, uh, that the, the, the setters will work with her and make her play the balls uh, the highest height possible so that she can use the height to, to, to play the volleyball. Yeah, but uh, uh, I'm happy for, for her and I'm happy for, for Philippines as a well, whole that they are able to produce uh, this kind of a player that uh, is uh, now known all over the world. Also, there's uh, Bagunas, who was also who also was doing good a good job in Japan. Yeah, and uh, I believe uh, Japan will produce more international players, uh, especially uh, the women's team. Uh, it's just a matter of time. With time, I believe they will produce uh, a lot of players who will be playing abroad, not only in, in Asia, but they will, we would have even some player, players playing in Europe. Yeah, so uh, I believe that strongly, yeah, from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, so we can do this. Thank you. Uh, Coach, a follow-up question to that. Do you see any other valuable players here in the Philippines right now who could follow the footsteps of uh, Jaja being considered in other countries? Yes, uh, I will say there's uh, one player, a Sparrow, the one who plays... uh, Espe- I don't know. Uh, Espejo? Es- no, not Espejo. The lady who plays in a, the, the rookie in... Uh, uh, in... Uh, Ateneo. There's this strong... Who was in NU? Actually, I've seen three players who are very tall, about six feet, who are in NU. Who can really... Uh, there's one in high school. Uh, and also some uh, b- bunch of uh, uh, players from uh, La Salle. Oh. Uh, yeah, because of the height. I'm not talking about, uh, yeah, if you look, anybody who's six feet and above, be assured that these people can play pro. If they have the fundamentals, if they have the correct uh, ways of, of learning and playing the game, then they have a bigger chance of playing abroad. Any lady any woman player with six feet they can play anywhere in the world this is what i was saying yeah so we have the height then we just have to work on uh, other things but um uh i believe if they want then they will if the will is there i believe they can make it yeah all right thank you coach i'd like to ask anding about that um, or about the thing with Jaja, what what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, it's re- the choice is really up to hers. But for me, if she's able to showcase her talent in the international world, then I'm all up for that. What if you were given that opportunity? Would you? What would you do? Um. Yes, because I don't think there's anything wrong with being able to sh- showcase your talent and show the world that how talented how talented you truly are. Thank you, Angie. Mai? Um, so, Jaja Deba is known as a well-decorated player, not just here in the Philippines, but also internationally lang, um, especially when she was given this opportunity to play in Japan. And I think, just like what Anding said, it's really up to her po um, if she'll pursue it. Because it's everybody's dream, diba, yeah. to na makadating sa national as uh, international na leagues most especially sa Olympics and what she get that opportunity yun um of course I'll grab it po because it's everybody's <laughs> dream just like what I've said and it's really a great opportunity to showcase your talent internationally especially coming from um, the Philippines. Yeah. All right. So, Andy, do you have any more questions on your end? I'd just like to say, uh, 
congratulations to you guys for uh, to Coach Okumu, Anding, and Mai for the efforts that you have given for your school in, in the past prior to the prior to the pandemic. Um, you have given us very memorable games, uh, and uh, Coach Okumu, uh, also your your wins in the tournaments you have played in and uh, I believe that UP still has a, a no, a still has uh, the chance to get to the final four and uh, hopefully the championship all right thank you so okay so I guess that's about it um I know my hindi ka kanta hindi ko nga eh patapos na tayo eh sige na one-liner, one-liner, one-liner. Yupi nami. <laughs> Kala ko serios. Yeah. Kala ko serios. <laughs> <laughs> yun na yun, sir. <laughs> oh, sige na. Anyway, before we formally end, I'd like to give the floor to, to our special guests. Um, if you want to make shout-outs or promote anything, I'm giving the floor to start with Coach first. Oh, th thank you so much, uh, Sir Brian. Um, what I'd like to say to uh, volleyball fans and uh, especially the UP community, uh, the VAR office, VAR director, the dean of uh, CHK, uh, the chancellor, and the president, that uh, we, we thank you uh, for giving us this uh, opportunity and the chance to uh, share with the UP community uh, the sport that we love from the bottom of our heart. And uh, we believe that with your help and continuous support, uh, we will even grow stronger and uh, we'll be able to put uh, UP as a, a volleyball uh, team uh, somewhere there in the map that something that people will remember for a very very long time so to the volleyball fans um, again I say we are a very strong contender and uh, we only hope that you continue giving us your support and uh, lift us up when we are down and uh, keep on encouraging the the young players because what we have now that is coming we have, uh, if you look at Mai and Andy, they are our seniors now. So they are the guys who will be carrying the torch for UP Volleyball. So we need your support. And I'll say uh, thank you for being there always. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Coach. And I hope Mai. Um, first and foremost, thank you, Sir Brian. And thank you, Coach Andy, for inviting us today. And... Um, I would like to also greet my parents, who I think are also watching, um, my family here in Pavia, and also my family in Rizal. Hello, I miss you all. And also, I just want to say thank you to the UP community for your continued support. May it be inside or outside the court. Um, we really hope to see you all soon. All right. And finally, Anding, who has marami pa rin tanong dito na hindi pa rin nasasal. So, um, yun nga. Thank you, Sir Brian and Coach Andy, for having us here on your show. Um, I would also like to thank the UP community for the continued support and the late Coach Oski because he has really supported us and guided, guided us and every team in UP. Um, Thank you to my family who has continuously commented <laughs> in this live. Thank you to my friends who have um, kept me sane during this pandemic. And of course, our teammates and our coaches in you. Thank you. All right. And of course, let's give Andy a chance to make any shout outs or you want to promote anything or baka may pasabo ka dyan kung sino yung next guest mo. <laughs> Siguro yung shout out sa ano kay Coach uh, JR Santiago to all the coaches and administrators of Spike and Serve Volleyball Academy. Thank you to all our guests, Coach Okumu, Anding, and Mai. Thank you for sharing with us your ano 
your uh, history and adventures in uh, UP. Uh, and ano, Brian, alam mo na, every time magkasama tayo, masaya eh. So, ulitin natin dapat yan. Asap. Of course. Nasa sa'yo yun. <laughs> alam mo naman ang schedule ko. Boxing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And as for me, thank you everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed kahit hindi kumanta si Mai at hindi umamin si Anding. <laughs> anyway, next, sa next show daw, sa next show. Uh, Pag-usapan natin yan. Let's plan for that. And I'd love to talk to Coach more. I believe we haven't tackled a lot, Coach. I, I think we can still talk a lot, talk a lot about a lot of things. Um, no thanks to the technical difficulties we had earlier. Anyway, sure, thank, thank you. Yes. Let's schedule that. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Um, happy weekend, and please stay safe. Um, the pandemic is still very much out there. And uh, uh, please like and subscribe uh, this uh, our page, Odian Crunch, uh, Crunch Time Sports, along with Sports Bites. And do catch us because we'll be having more shows. Like later, I'll have one with Vince Vico. On that, uh, again, have a safe weekend ahead and enjoy the rest of the day. Good night. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Malunggay orange, malunggay iced tea. Mas mas substantia at mas masarap. Ang dating iced tea at orange juice, may bago na. May malunggay. Malunggay orange, malunggay iced tea. Mas mas substantia at mas masarap. Yabano Hong Kong Iced Tea HG Goyabano I love my HG One Goang Pilipino Two Walang Kafin Three Goa Sa Dahon ng Goyabano HG Goyabano Hong Kong Iced Tea Bumangon sa tapang at lasa ng bagong pag-asa. A bold blend of Baraco Coffee, fortified in malanggay and other extracts, rich in potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Tikman ang bagong kape ng bayan. Pacquiao Coffee. Pacquiao Original Blend 3-in-1 Coffee. Lasa ng bagong pag-asa.